Else. Has other ideas. This is also the team that Team Liquid defeated in the third place game to break the curse. That's true. Currently coming in at four and one as well. Team Liquid looking to go five and one. Yeah. Which would give them first place or a share of first place. Guaranteed by the end of the week. About right. This time in the spring, there was still hashtag Keith. Keep Keith. Yeah. Keep Keith. Keep Keith. Make it happen. Still that miscommunication, but it has been rounded out by Team Liquid. They are putting up some wins. 4-1 right now as they take on oh. the 3-2 and two impulse. You see the bands going out uh, on the list here. So Rush wants to play Lee Sin. Really you, badly. Think so? you think so? Yeah, I think so. They have banned Rek'Sai and Gragas. Last ban Lee Sin. Do it. Aw, oh, Sivir. So actually, Apollo won't get his sixth game in a row of Sivir. Callista's picked up by him, though, this time. So we'll see how he fares on a different AD carry for the first time here in the summer split. It's true. Finally, a little bit of differentiation in playstyle. That's some Props to Team Liquid for taking it away from them. Kobe would always say at Champion Select, just like, take their initiation away. Get it away from them. Yep. Xiaowei Xiao is around picking people off one by one. The rest of the team goes in on a Sivir alt, so they don't have that anymore. Team Liquid still with a lot of options for what they actually want to go for. Easy uh, picks. 510 patch we are Ooh. on right now, so LeBlanc still not nerfed yet. Yeah, blind pick LB as well. Phoenix usually not afraid to pick what he wants. We also don't usually see him on regular mid laners like LeBlanc. So it's true. Going for those different Mostly. ones. Played Rumble Aside from yesterday in the mid lane. No, I'm sorry, it was Keen rather. Yeah. I always get those two. I don't know why. He played LeBlanc yesterday, man, in the mid lane. But yeah. that was his first LeBlanc of the split. Yep. Phoenix gonna need to do assassination things. I also do like the Nautilus pick against Callista. Callista's so yeah. hippity hoppity, you just click on her with the ultimate, she'll stop at least for a few seconds. Right, Riptide not doing too much as he slows. Good little matchup. Could be another Annie Callista gameplay we see coming in here. That was Lost Boy Wild Turtle last game. They could try their hand at it themselves. Impulse really discussing the way they want to do this composition now. They don't have Ooh. that Sivir that usually gets in there. And yeah. it's a rumble. Impact's rumble though is really scary. We had the feature at the start of the day on Balls' as rumble. It's scary. Impact's Rumble just a bit below that, but still incredibly fearsome. Especially when you can ult someone with Annie to keep them in the Equalizer. Piglet, please don't pick Tristana. Well, Impulse already has a team that can get themselves into fights, so that's looking uh, right up their alley so far. 30 seconds on the clock. Talked a little bit about Sejuani earlier. Been missing her. She's not getting that gameplay. Ben left out on the bench quite a bit. Dominic yeah. may try his hand here. Yeah, well, we see the double jungle bans here, so oh, junglers have to flex to some other things. Seems like Impulse is definitely going to go with the Lee Sin just based on the bans and how much Rush yeah. can make plays on it. And then you have to, as I will dominate, decide what can withstand the Lee Sin in the early game the most and what type of trade-offs do I want to make. Uh, Nunu is one option. Sejuani is the other. If they're not going to do a hyper-carry type AD, the Sejuani makes more sense. And they do lock it in easily. Yes, they do. So with that, a little bit more fight coming from these guys, but also putting Pigment on something that has to get to the late game to really start doing his damage. Well, here's my thoughts on Trist. Think it out. I personally do not like Tristana as a pick in this meta. So Tristana used to have this hyper carry threat, but with the changes, she has not the greatest attack speed late game. Her range doesn't extend hugely. So Tristana's strengths are very narrow. If Tristana can get to a turret, she knocks it down almost immediately. And she can disengage team fights. That's it. She doesn't actually get to the turrets easily though. Like Callista early game is stronger than Trist. Callista late game in fights is stronger than Trist right. in so many ways. But in that small, small windows, you can have the Tristan advantages, which is why I just think it's too narrow of a pick for competitive play. Uh, yet, yeah. we continue to see it from time to time. Just seeing uh, Yasuo on the side of Impulse reminded me of some of the Trist Yasuo comps we would see. But like yeah. you said, very narrow. Always That's true. just one kind of situation you have to get to. Cassidy being picked up. Haven't really seen that other than getting banned against Inox are really in his hands. So see what Xiaowei Xiao can put up here as Lee Sin does indeed go to Rush. Yeah, and I like Cassidy specific. Xiaowei Xiao picks specifically for the lane frequently. Mm -hmm. uh, and I actually like the Cassidy into the LeBlanc. It's a fairly safe matchup because you can avoid a lot of the poke with your shield on Cassidy. Yeah. And then Cassidy can actually outscale LeBlanc later in the game if you don't fall behind as well. So as far as safe matchups go against LeBlanc, there's very few. Cassidy is on the safer side. As long as you have the mana pool, 
He can rift walk more than she can. It's true. It's a good thing. It's a Even good thing. once is more rift walks than the bog. <laughs> yeah. There but you go. You can don't you can jump farther away, that's for sure. <laughs> Get them distortions in. Hecaro maybe for Quas in the top lane. He can still put down some fight. He gets himself on the horse here, so. Yeah. Will be the first duplicate champion for Quas all split, but it is a good one to duplicate. He had some tremendous flanks in their game against Cloud9 yesterday. Uh, mainly the difference maker in most of Team Liquid's fights. Interesting to hear how he kind of pointed out how he has to play against Impact being a more mechanically and just overall fundamentally smart player. He needs to look for different angles to make that work in the team fights because he knows it's not just going to be a straight out teleport in the lane. Impact's going to be able to make it work. Yeah, and if we're looking at these team comps right now, if I'm looking at what Team Liquid wants to do, they almost need to lane swap. I don't want them to put Hecarim early against Rumble, and also they need to get access to turrets quickly so Trist can actually access her strengths as a champion. So I'd expect Team Liquid to invade for some early wards, probably swap up to the top side of the map, and try and four-man down that turret early on into the game. Very interesting. We will have to see if that comes to be as we head into the game. Coach Fly and Coach Peter leaving their teams now. Final hug before the teams punch each other right in the mouth. That's how it goes down. <laughs> We're just about to get into this one. Third game of the day here already. Like I said, three weeks in and day two. It's all going too fast, but we're getting great matches out of it. And for this one, you can vote again for the team who you think will come out on top. Tweet at LOL Esports with the hashtag TIP win or hashtag TL win. And we'll tally those up throughout the game. You saw the comms on your screen. You get one last chance to vote. No changing throughout the game. We'll find you. If it's on Twitter, you probably just send in two hashtags and might count it on both sides. Oh. Not sure how that works. You'd be playing both sides, though, <laughs> and there's no real winner there. Nope. But I guess you win in general, and you feel like a winner. <laughs> One of these guys can only win, however, coming off the rift, and Impulse and Team Liquid about to leave everything on it. Consumables for the mid lane so they can keep fighting. Let's see if this lane swap happens as well. Maybe we won't get any jungle pressure there. We'll see how this Phoenix versus Xiao Wei Xiao matchup goes 1v1. Yeah, that'll be an exciting one. Already. I'm really interested in the early game lane swap. Right in the mouth. Shh, it's, it's, so, it's, it's happening really so fast, you right just now. can't hear it. Yep. Faster than the speed of sound. Eventually, it'll catch up. Yep. Light travels faster than sound. Swing. There we go. Got him. We also get a so. boxer lease in as well, so we'll have the fight bell going off all the time. This is uh, not lane swappy territory at the moment. <laughs> or is it? It's, it's a bit of a mind game going on right here. They placed defensive wards and then backed off. If I had to guess, Team Impulse is calling a lane swap blind, thinking that Liquid would not go for it, or would go top lane, but uh, now Liquid's going to be getting a lane swap. <sighs> I've also been seeing this more from mid laners. I saw Frog do it the other day on Echo, but staying for the extra potion. Making sure you have a little bit more really? health or mana in lane. Yeah. Both of them actually doing it. Knowing it's going to be a very harassy lane. Yeah. yeah this is particularly Quas's Hecarim when compared to other Hecarims. Yeah. Of course, that's one game for Quas. He was 7 0 and 9 for a 16 KDA. Crushing the average. Yeah. Not easy to catch up to that guy once he gets going. We did see last split, however, a lot of games where Quas would get going and Team Liquid couldn't transition that actually into the win of the game. Which is too much power on one guy. He really had nowhere to go with it. This time, it seems like everybody's been showing up throughout the game. It's not just kind of one all-star. Mm -hmm. Get Piglet fed in the beginning. I don't know if that's the way it'll happen this time on Tristana, but... For sure, make sure all the lanes are doing well, not just try to get one going. This one pans out with a little bit of double jungling to start since we did get the lane swap. Impulse heads to the top side as Piglet is going to get that free farm in the bottom lane. Going to help him as well since Explosive Shot does make it a little bit harder to farm. Really strange jungle paths early on in the game, and mm -hmm. Special went for a red buff invade, but he only caught Impulse doing Raptors. Impulse went three small camps and then doubled back towards their blue, <laughs> which I don't think I've ever seen before. Really, really strange. Got to do something different. Puts them all on the top side for four. 
yeah. which is probably the timing of when they think the bottom side would be cleared, and that's when they would catch Dominate. If it's the way it works out, they are perfectly on time for catching at least one up here at the top turret, and now they're going to get it. You said yeah. it was probably going to be TL that wants to take down these turrets fast. Adrian has to flash out. So does Rush. Two flashes burned. Bit of an erroneous dive there coming in from Impulse. They had the people in place, but they did not have the positioning. Once they got there, there Rend onto his special the potions there. Oh, he flashes away from Rush. They still get the kill onto Adrian. He's in turret shot range. Takes one. Quas could pick up a kill here, but they're dispersing too quickly. Messy, messy engage. Early game power from Lee Sin also wants to dive and force action right away. Getting the kill onto is Rush, Apollo man. is absolutely huge. Rush doesn't necessarily need the kill. They also force the teleport out of Quas coming oh, up boy. There, and Quas overstepping oh. hugely right there. Oh, oh boy. For his life. They were inside his mind on that one. They waited. They said, we know it. Took him down. Very methodical here by Impulse and the bit of chaos. They thrive in there. Yeah, already they're starting to force some strange things, and it's because of that weird jungle path. Totally messing with the mind of the opponent for top lane. right now. Piglet as well down in the bottom lane. Maybe Team Liquid wanted to set up a big wave later, but now because of the disaster that happened to the top lane, Piglet has nothing but to just maintain the freeze that he wants to hold down there, so he'll get a CS advantage. And now the next hope for Piglet to come back on the game with Trist is with a level 6 power spike. If he hits level 6 before the enemy AD carry, he could all in him. Outside of that, I don't see many ways for Tristana to access success this match. Oh boy. Just looking at what really came of that. Impact with three assists now. His teleport's up. Quas used his and died in that situation. Things are not looking good for the early game here of Liquid. Definitely not. It's that Lee Sin. I love the bans from Team Impulse. Yep. They're banning into their play style. It's not so much... You know, I was talking earlier about how this particular patch has so many power picks that a lot of times you're just having a real struggle to ban away your opponent. Mm -hmm. So what Impulse did is they just banned into their favor for their particular picks. They didn't right. ban out I Will Dominate's champion, they just banned out the jungle power picks so that Rush can play his specialty without getting oppressed by the power of Gragas and Rek'Sai. And uh, man, does he ever make a difference in the early part of games. Again, going warrior and chant, so he still wants to do damage on that Lee Sin throughout the game. Piglet, rocket jump in, gets an explosive shot onto Apollo. Looks like it's gonna do a good bit of damage and it's enough from the front end burst to follow up with the CC. Give that pill over, or kill over to Piglet, and they still focus the Trist lane to get him going. Really good gank. I mean, that's the one advantage the Team Lincoln can have after the dive in the top lane is their AD carry is stronger than the enemy. Oh. Temporarily, just because of experience. Oh! <laughs> Says, oh yeah? I can hit level six. Do, do you want to watch your mid laner die? That was nice Whoa. by Phoenix. Played that very, very well. Xiao Wei Xiao just under level six on that. Yeah. Did he, did he hit level 6 right before the all-in? I think he did. Yeah, Phoenix was level 5. As soon as Rush joins the lane, Phoenix gets a minion to die, hits level 6, and all-ins right away. That's how he picked up the kill right there. So Xiao Wei Xiao not judging the experience just right. Phoenix timing it perfectly. Oh, good dodge by Quas. Oh! Play. Dominate was also following up as well. They don't really have the wards to see this. Dominate was just on the trail of Rush. They're going to make this happen. The Ignite goes in. It should be able to tick down. Rush, one more hit. He stays alive. Didn't even have a potion. It was the safeguard to impact to save his life. Good counter gank by I will Dominate, but it comes up empty-handed from the kill's perspective. Even so, Team Liquid has completely bounced back from the early game. Double kill plus teleport burn, mainly thanks to the play of Phoenix and a nice gank in the bottom lane. Six HP left there for Rush as he made his way out. Jeez. This also makes it harder on Quas. That three assists rumble now doesn't have any kill pressure on him, so he can start to have a little yeah. bit more fun in that lane. Definitely. Of course, he did burn his ignite, so the kill pressure from the Hecarim will be a little lower. Right, right. There's that Brutalizer already under Rush. <laughs> Going for more damage, as we said, he's building up. Yeah. Rush, while he is farming the jungle, that is definitely not his primary role right now. <laughs> he farms Brutalizer champions. means he wants to fight early and often. Maybe even just going right back to the top lane, knowing Quas doesn't have it ignite. They'd have to do it before Quas hits level 6, though. It's going to be a very tight timer if he goes up there. 
see Adrian and Here's Apollo. that turret damage from, yep. from Trist. Because of the experience advantage, Trist is actually yeah. able to get short bursts of turret taking too. That's the other strength of Trist, is not only turret taking overall, but being able to burst it down very quickly. And Ian, a couple hits, does more turret damage from Trist than yeah. any other champion in the game. Now has that buster shot, can shoot back anyone that gets into range. Transfer over to blue means that dominates on that bottom side. We'll see where his pressure continues to go. It looks like he's going to get a small invade here onto Rush as he figures the same thing is happening over in Xiaowei Zhao. And they do ping him out nicely, so no pressure. Too much pressure should come of that. So Chalice, Fiendish Codex for Phoenix in the mid lane. Xiaowei Zhao doing the Ooh. stacking that he can once he can get to that Rod of Ages. A little bit of a lack of vision down in the bottom lane, which is why you saw the pings of question right. from Impulse. See him on that pink or er, pink ward coming out. That was good four wards, however, placed by Dominate. They're gonna be able to keep good track onto Rush throughout this now, but he looks like he's actually heading all the way down to go for a lane. That'll be the timing when Adrian hits six as well, and they might be able to surprise Team Liquid. That would be the play. There's flashes up for Team Liquid. Yeah. The question would be how well can Impulse execute this gank? It's going to be somewhat unsuspected because Rush hasn't been in his jungle to dominate deep ward. Normally, those deep wards give you a lot of safety. Right. Uh, so, dominate is maybe even going to be ganking at the same time. This could be bloody in the bottom lane. Dominate's in that brush clean. Oh boy. Right onto Apollo. Anger toss as well. Here comes Rush in. Could get the kick back. They instantly pop down Apollo, though. That's going to be Piglet going down. He tries to jump over the wall, but he cannot make it over the top line of the trees without taking too much damage. Good stun back on. Wait, here comes a teleport in from Quas. That cannot be stopped by Impact. Here's the outplay. He's trying to get around Impact right now. That's what he needs to do to win that. But if Xiao Wei Xiao already had the roam down, it could equal this out for him. And it does. That's three kills now coming in for Impact. This is working out fantastically for pushing the bot lane. The number of things that had to happen in order for that bloodbath to occur, it's a lot of them, but it did happen, which is, makes me happy at the end of the day. Dominate, sneaking all the way into the brush. Because of the deep wards there, he had this, the, yeah. the thought that it was going to work, but Rush was also there, somehow avoiding the wards, just a little bit slow on the gank. Everyone jumps down there, Shaoi Shao with some rift walks, cross with the teleport, and we got the bloody engagement we thought we would. Yep. TP coming in from Hecarim, but... Yeah, great two-man ultimate right there, especially onto the Callista, so it can't be saved. Oh, that's Impact where it tried happened. to teleport, okay. and then Quas says, Ha-ha, I interrupted you, goes down himself shortly after. Uh, but as far as this fight goes, I like the fact that Tibbers did the damage, and then Rush waited until the stun was there to guarantee his extra Qs yep. of damage. Try as he may, he couldn't Second quite fight. escape. So, had Phoenix not just back, that would have been an even bloodier fight. He was walking out of base yeah. that entire time. So it's almost counteracted that Impact's teleport was stopped, but Xiaowei Xiao was the one they able to make it down from mid lane there. Interesting set of actions, or rather interactions, between the teams. As we head back to this mid lane, you can see that kill Phoenix was able to kind of squeak out on Xiaowei Xiao has given him just about a 20 CS lead there. Also, the advantage to keep heading in. Yeah. What's really interesting to me about this game is Apollo picked up the double kill early on in the lane while Piglet was freezing bottom lane. And then instead of maintaining that lane swap and trying to kind of either repeat the dive or just allow Callista to farm early, uh, Impulse swapped back before any type of experience advantage could equalize. So therefore, Piglet's had a level or more on Apollo this entire time. No. Pretty much negating the double kill that Apollo got early just because the experience has never allowed him to get an upper hand in the lane. And it's actually allowing Piglet to get quite strong here on Trist. I think they put a lot of priority on hitting that level 6 with the three that were going to engage in the lane. Looks like they just used the Relic to get into position here. And they are not going to go all out for Xiaowei Xiao in the mid lane. Dragon Control is theirs. However, once they see Rush on the top side, it might just go down right quick here. Quas going to get out nice and easy, but... Looks like Liquid's actually following too much here to take Dragon of their own. Yeah, game of the week living up to its hype a little bit right here mm -hmm. because it's pretty bloody. Close game. Two teams fighting for their spots in the standings. Impulse is 3-2 and two coming in. Team Liquid 4-1. and one. First Dragon still not taken. Uh, item break point wise, it's getting pretty close. Xiao Xiao's going to need his Rod of Ages as soon as possible. Yeah. It'll help a little bit with that. <laughs> That's for sure. That Athene's being finished up on Phoenix means that regen's going to allow him to keep going in. 
now they're starting to put a little bit of pressure on him, making sure he cannot get all this damage on the Shao Wei Shao. He's got enough for Rod of Ages. But the pressure loss may open up a window for Dragon. Doesn't look like Team Liquid's in position to get it, even though they have the ward coverage too. Liquid definitely putting a priority on pink wards and the control over Dragon right now. Impulse, however, is a team that will fight over pink wards, so I'm sure they're not too worried that they haven't warded that area up yet. It just means they have more chances to get a fight in. Six to five, 13 and a half minutes in. They seem pretty calm and collected, just farming out the lanes right now, but still giving a lot of distance to Piglet and Expecial without having that turret behind them just now. Quas making a bit of a move here. Quas is gone. forward wards in. Yeah, and he's also gone for very early home guards into a Spectre's count, which is very respectful towards the Rumble, but it will yeah. delay the power spike from Quas pretty substantially. Uh, normally when you're doing the Teleport Ignite instead of Teleport Smite, yep. you want the Trinity Force first because you're really hoping to hit that 20 minute point with home guards and Triforce and just go blow up an 80 carry. Adrian with a flash ult miss big time. And see, this is another thing. Quas doesn't really want to be in this lane against Rumble. It's forced him into strange itemizations. Mm -hmm. But it's a it's a survival tactic Quas is willing to withstand because Piglet is gaining such an edge in the duel. Well, you did hear that Impact said a few times Quas has that thoughtless itemization. Goes through it, builds what he wants to build, and Impact would take control of that. Quas said he would get around Impact through the angle of his plays. So maybe yeah. he doesn't matter, matter, worry about the itemization. Yeah. In this game in particular, it's unconventional, but there's there's thought into it. His thought is, I need to survive Impact Rumble. Because if, if Quas comes back to lane with the Fate, he dies. Yeah. Which is the unfortunate thing. But yeah, it's a... Uh, it's an itemization path that will give him trouble later, for sure, because it has the immediate impact right now. And you're going to see Rumble being able to still throw down equalizers at a dragon. He's very effective. Shao Wei Shao trying to get a little bit of his own fight on in the mid lane. Well, the majority of the team has backed for now, so just picking up resources, a bit of breathing room. Team Liquid has the lead, but only by about 1,600 gold right now. Good forward wards, just giving Team Liquid an idea, the knowledge of where Tip is right now. Still farming up, Piglet's 141 to 95 of Apollo's CS. And we still have to remember that Sivir was banned out against Impulse this time, so they don't have that regular engage. They've been looking for picks this whole time, whatever Rush can do. Yeah, and Rush was able to get that one kill mm -hmm. early on in the game, but since then, hasn't been able to really help Apollo. Team Liquid's managed to actually get Trist into some turret-taking situations which is accessing the power of that champion. Maybe think of uh, drawing back. Whoa. Pretty long e Oh, it's for Rush to come in. They kick him right up against the wall, trying to make a plaque out of the horse. Ah. The onslaught of shadows out of the way, thinking Impact might have had harpoon distance. A little bit of miscommunication there as they both turn away or just saying, ah, we couldn't get the kill out of it. Unfortunate once again here. Impulse trying to factor in a few kills, but Liquid making it out by the skin of their teeth each time. Also, as a, well, maybe not. Hold that. As I was bringing up Adrian's engage in that mid lane, put a Sivir alt on that, and that Tibbers probably would have been in range to hit Phoenix. Yeah. But it wasn't. Things they usually do kind of falling just short without that speed. Mm -hmm. But it's not everything. Doesn't super win them the game. Xiao Wei Xiao being 8 0 5 on his LeBlanc in past games. <laughs> Can still take off on the Cassidy. Yeah, and going into later and later game, it's going to be pretty powerful. Phoenix going an incredibly yeah. defensive build on his mm -hmm. LeBlanc right here. He's got an Athenes, and then he's going to be going Abyssal Scepter second. Uh, that's not your normal LeBlanc build. No. But because Xiao Wei Xiao is poking him so heavily in the lane, and I guess because of the double AP composition of Impulse. It's going to keep him alive in those situations. It's going to leave him very vulnerable to yeah. Rush and Apollo, though, and also diminish his ability to one-shot people. Well, there is that Abyssal Scepter. Finishes it up, hopefully not getting killed by Adrian Shao and Shao and Impact. Yeah. This build is quite strong right now, but it's going to heavily delay when Phoenix gets super strong. Yeah. The magic resist he has basically makes it so he takes very little damage. He's got 105 MR. And he also gets the 
magic shred from the Abyssal Scepter. But even that doesn't have that much synergy because they have a physical damage top laner. It's a very selfish uh, That's true. Abyssal Scepter purchase as far as they go. It's the setup, Jat. Xiao Wei Xiao should be a little scared. He can call on the Void to get himself out, though. The rest of the team filtering up here. They may be able to catch Adrian on somewhat of a rotation. Team Liquid keeps being able to rotate to these turrets and get Tristana having free shots on him. It's really helping him in the overall gold game. Uh, Rush has not been as present as we are used to seeing his Lee Sin. And yeah, you give Trist time on a turret and it's Boom. gone. One, two, three, right around the outside. Liquid has not had too much trouble getting themselves to the turrets to take him down, but now have to kind of react to this pressure in the mid lane. Only two members is going to be what's cost there. And they get out nice with that. 129 to 113. Just looking at Quas and Impact. They're in the bottom lane, as they were in the top, as they keep fighting back and forth. We're going to have to see if Impact gets thwarted off any more teleports here. Very big play by Quas coming into that last one that Xiao Wei Zhao was able to kind of rectify after that play. It's about the only action we've really seen. Huge fight in the bot lane, a few picks here and there. A lot of focus on the Phoenix. But yeah. Nothing really working for Impulse. Game's definitely calmed down a fair bit. Mm -hmm. Team Liquid does have some really nice inbuilt synergies for team fights, though, like a huge amount of crowd control. A lot of times, if you're bringing yeah. Nautilus to Juani, just those two, it's enough. And then you just stack the rest of your lanes with damage. Yep but they have the Hecarim CC, the LeBlanc chains, as well as a knockback from Trist. So very good disengage and engage tools for Team Liquid to kind of pick their fights. And that's all Tip has is that nice ultimate. Very but what does it get? Distanced engage there. Quas able to dive right into the fight. I don't think he really wanted to be in that spot with the team kind of delaying the engage. And everybody's going to back off on this one. Xiaowei Xiao get one last rift and pulse in before they disengage onto this one. So another engage by Team Impulse that would have been perfect with Sivir on oh, the outside. No. Oh, one more! Phoenix very, very low. Gets out with the blue buff. Has that next distortion up if he has to get to more safety, but Impulse able to kind of brute force their way through this fight. They didn't even get really a solid engage out of it. It was all very scattered. But yeah. Enough to scare Team Liquid. They have the flash tippers. They have the chase potential yeah. of the Lee Sin and the Kasdan, but not a huge amount of lockdown yeah. to really get Team Liquid dead. But they did enough poke as they were chasing them back. Interesting how Piglet built the QSS this early on into the game. Really going to hurt his DPS overall, but maybe Team Liquid's just going to be playing hit and run. Kill a turret, run away, kill a turret, run away, over so. and over again. Definitely a defensive role to see from two, or a defensive itemization from two members that are trying to carry the game right here in the middle. I'd even say, I'd even go as far as to say all of their carries are building defensive in this game. Yeah. Right? Qua yeah. started Spectre's yeah. Cal before going into Trinity Force. Phoenix has gone double magic resist. And Piglet built QSS as a second big item. These are more defensive than normal builds in all three cases. It, it is actually, if you think about it strategically, it might be a team plan here. Impulse, they they pry off or, they prey off of early aggression. All right, let's build defensive early and then get into our offensive yeah. items. I mean, they're, they're getting turrets right now. Mm -hmm. They are able to disengage a full flash terrors along with an equalizer without really losing anybody, so... Things are looking pretty good. The teleport did come from Quas, so that's something they do not have over impact right now. It could come into play, and you can see the gold difference. About 700 gold that Phoenix is ahead of Xiaowei Xiao right now. Yep. So they're only pretty much just even, except for those 80 carries, of course. So Liquid to set up a bit more here. This dragon should be theirs. See Rush just under the dragon pit here. Could give a little bit of hell to Team Liquid. The rest of them grouping, but we have the back from Adrian, so I don't know. Yeah. Weird timings here for them to be going back. Hmm. Yeah, Dragon up in three seconds. There we go. We canceled the recalls. The call's been made for Dragon. And it's because of the vision control that it's yeah. relatively uncontested. Here. Team Liquid, or er, I'm sorry, Team Impulse just kind of okay with charging up here, giving away a few things. We've seen many dragons go to a team, and still they have their opponents take the victory. So not too much yeah. pressure, only two over to Liquid now. Credit for Team Liquid to calming down the pace of this game. Impulse was kind of playing their way with the crazy early fights, Rush always forcing things. But then with some good rotations and some heavily defensive itemizations, Impulse has lost their ability yeah. to make picks. Whether or not Team Liquid gets punished 
for these defensive itemizations by just not having damage when we actually do see right. team fights. We've yet to see, but early on it does appear to be working. Also, I have to remember that that huge fight gave somebody like Impact three assists in the early game. So that Quas taking that defensive itemization was like, whoa, these guys actually got a way better start than we did. Yep. We are going to have to play safe. So it's really working out for them now. Hopefully it can in the team fights. It's been a lot of disengaging for Team Liquid right now after the turrets. Walking up to them for Piglet and the team isn't the easiest thing without taking just one member down of Team Impulse first. 3k gold lead. And Liquid is pretty much happy with that. They're not pressuring too hard unless it's power in numbers right now. And with the forward wards going up, they're only placing as much as they can defend here. They're going to start walking around that area. Got it. Yeah, Baron becomes the next area of control right now. They've knocked out the outer turrets. It's very difficult to get the inner turrets, especially until they can move their wards up. So they're slowly trying to move these wards up. Great little poke there. A lot of bells going off. <laughs> just, just means a whole lot of damage. So the Luden's Echo now finished up onto Shao Wei Shao. What an interesting game Liquid has kind of turned this one into. We're waiting for Impulse to go into aggressive mode and kind of use what they get for victories against them in that chaotic fight. Hopefully the Impulse makes a mistake as they keep trying to go for engages, but they're not getting it. Liquid is kind of left to their own here, and their plan is not working out. Kloss about to complete the classic 27-minute Triforce. There you go. See it all the time. But... Uh... <laughs> Definitely not. That's an incredibly late Triforce, and he's still not even there. They've managed to not take too much damage, though. The communication is completely on point for the team. They don't feel like they have to push themselves in any scary situations, and with full control right here, definitely a scary situation for Impulse to have to be in. Oh, that could actually be the kill. All right, he's on, he's out. I'll say one more follow-up. Right. It is going to be from Dominate. That's his call, the team follows through, Rush gets hit, he'll safeguard back, and the team will be out for now. 35 seconds of the death timers we're looking at here, so a little bit for Team Liquid to work with. Piglet wasn't even in this fight. It's all on Phoenix right there. There's another ult. Another yeah. Tibber is not going in the right spot. Adrian kind of almost looking like he's feeling forced to throw it on these ultimates, forced to make a play for the team and get himself in Team position. Liquid is controlling the initiations in this match. They have better yeah. crowd control, they've built defensive, so it's very hard for Impulse to start fights on them. But now with the turret down, Quas looking to start a fight. That's a big pile. Onslaught of Shadows right through the team would be perfect, especially with the turret still being up. It has about a half health. They go back onto Apollo. He's dip diving, dodging out of this one. They're able to take down Quas. Three members already down here for Team Liquid as Impulse just kind of waltzes out. Back to the turret. Quas had gone behind looking for a flank fight, but they still didn't have Piglet. So there were basically only three members of Team Liquid at their turret, and then the damage dealer was the one who got picked off at the very start. Yeah. So Impulse picks up a big fight win off of what could have been a big turret game for Team Liquid. Ooh. Close there. Just a quick lock to the Iron Solari as Piglet throws out a bit Man. more harass. Action begins. Yep. So let's watch here. Quas is trying to get the pick, but Phoenix gets blown up. He jumps into a stun from Adrian. Adrian had popped his W, yep. and they instantly blow him up on his distortion poke. So all credit to Adrian there for starting this fight. The rest was piling on for Impulse. Add that to the opportunity of that happening exactly when Team Liquid was trying to do their flank, and that's why the fight went the way it did. Instantly, they run back to Baron and say, this is what we'll get it back. Don't let that happen again. Liquid still having a 2k gold lead on this, even though Impulse was able to scratch back a little bit there, definitely grabbing a rung of the ladder to climb back in this one. See if any more of these ultimates from Adrian are going to go to the side and actually start hitting. Not very easy with the team he is up against. They all have kind of dashes or speeds up to start getting away, which again is where the Sivir comes into play for Impulse something that would make these fights go in their favor. Very much so. It's true. Every time they see Piglet off on the side, instead of waiting back and forth and getting picked off, they just Sivir and go. Yep. It's not possible for them to do right now. Close. It looks like building up somewhat of a righteous glory onto Adrian, but without these fights in their favor, the gold doesn't go that way. 30 seconds on Dragon. 
looks like Team Liquid is going to start for us in a bit of Impulse's hand towards this barren area once again. Mm. Definitely have the fight in their favor as long as Xiao Wei Xiao doesn't find that back line. Dragon coming up too, but this time Team Impulse is pushed up in the map. Yeah. So they are not completely face checking into a potential LeBlanc assassination. Yeah, they, this. This needs to be threatened with a Baron from Team Liquid. Either Team Liquid has to fight the Dragon or threaten the Baron. Mm -hmm. They're kind of pushing up a wave in the mid lane that couldn't even get the turret. They're very indecisive play there by Team Liquid. They half pushed the wave mid, they didn't sweep wards, and they give an uncontested Dragon. Very different from what we've seen from Impulse. As I'm talking about it earlier on the desk today as we open the show, is that they make people play to their pace, and that really hasn't happened at all this game. They got the few first kills, and then it's like they were okay resting on that, which is usually where Rush starts to go off, starts to kill everybody. But Liquid held off. Like you said, that defensive build, I guess, really did pay off for him in the end. Now, yeah. still throwing more defense on it as well. Yeah. They're reaching the points in their builds now where they're normalized. They started defensive, mm -hmm. and now they're becoming the normal builds. Once a death cap is completed on Phoenix, relatively strong because he's got good magic penetration from the Abyssal Scepter, uh, especially when Bloodthirster's down on Piglet. That's three full offensive items. Trinity Force on Hecarim. Uh, it's all coming together now for Team Liquid. It's time to fight. Eventually, they will need to fight if they want to win. But it's going to be tricky. Win here would absolutely be very nice. The past few teams they face, Gravity Cloud 9, now Impulse, then TSM. It's not going to get easier for Liquid here within these next few weeks. So wins here would definitely help over the top teams that are getting all the other ones crushed out. I'm sure it would help with the mentality as too. Knowing that Piglet working out 100 times better this split. The communication is there. I mean, the guy was literally benched for kind of not getting to get, getting along with the team, not being organized, not playing enough, but still gave got the chance, had the chance, and used it to his fullest. And Piglet's farm is insane this game. Yeah. He's got 320 CS at 30 minutes, more than 10 per minute. And he, he's been the guy roaming around and taking mm -hmm. the big wave after big wave. He just ran up top, got another basically free 10 CS. Yep. Almost actually on that Bloodthirster as well to get into the fight. It's kind of relying on rapid fire to get him up there and attack speed along with his static shiv. Doesn't want any of that uh, last whisper though. None of that armor pen just yet for himself. Where do they decide to go from here? Looks like they're actually somewhat giving a little bit more respect here to Impulse. They lost vision on the map, so they have to at this point. Game's still very close. 3,000 gold lead in favor of Liquid here, 30 minutes in. Both these last games have been very slow for either team to kind of want to take hold. Until they have like a 5,000 gold lead, it's very slow play. Yeah, and especially with Team Liquid's misplay on that Dragon, some of their win conditions would be they're controlling the five Dragons mm -hmm. or trading for a Baron, which are all game accelerators. <laughs> Time to fight. <laughs> Call so it off. Call it in. off. Nope, round's over, actually. <laughs> That's what that bell was for. So, even having that Crystalline Bracer goes for the Mikhail's Crucible for Adrian, or on Adrian, I should say, for the team. Yeah. Just the eye there. Well, there's just so much CC on the side of Team yeah. Liquid. The Mikhail's is it's it's not necessary. necessary. Not worried about engaging too much anymore, rather than the engage or disengage first. That Righteous Gory is, however, finished up onto a special. I'm just waiting for Team Liquid to pull the trigger here. Rabadon's death cap finished up onto Phoenix. He's finally gotten to his points as well. After those defensive builds from all of Team Liquid in the mid game. Impis, Impulse able to pick up their resources now. Very slow after the outer ring of turrets was broken here. It doesn't seem like any team has an idea of how to get past each other's defensive walls. Really feels like it. Like the wind has been taken out of Team Impulse's sails, but that doesn't mean they're out of the game. Nope. The casting can scale incredibly well in the late game, especially now that he's hit level 16. The cooldown on his dashes is almost non-existent. 1.33 seconds per dash. Oh. Maybe we see a fight here. They decided to go. 5v5 in the mid lane. Adrian and Shao is out very low. Fate's Call pulls him back and throws Adrian out of the fight, but he still goes down to Ignite. Quas is able to pick that one up. Now on to Impact, and Liquid found the exact fight that they wanted off of the dredge line from Ixpecial. Team Liquid controls when to fight, 
and they decided to go right there. They have more of the initiation opportunities. Ooh. They pick up two and not lose a single person, which means they can just turn on to Baron. Yeah, going to tear this down right away. Piglet's going to be getting some good damage on that. Qua still very good. Ah! He took hardly any damage in the fight. Got to watch out for that Nautilus. He dies in his homeland of the water, though. He's fine. Smile on his face. Special needs to work on his spacing and raid boss fights. <laughs> Okay, let's watch this. Champion spacing. It's real. Yeah. Oh! Oh! The, on to Callista the too. jump. The jump auto. I think he was splitting the uprights on that one, but I'll give it to him. Yeah, and then the equalizer doesn't quite land in the right spot. Yeah, pretty much just the dredge line. Not even a reliable form of CC right mm -hmm. there, but he just landed the skill shot. Great pressure by Team Liquid now. Impulse finally says, all right, we're taking the bottom turret. People are doing things. It's a bit scattered on the map. We'll use this chance to take bottom. But they already have Liquid dictating middle. LeBlanc and Tristana about to take down mid turret. They have the wave, and they have Baroned up minions as well. It's oh, these turrets be, go down fast. going to be a quick Watch this here. Trist. Impact has ultimate. I don't know if he's going to try to lay it across the minion wave, though. And he may actually go down himself with where he's been put. Very back and forth. Phoenix gets in. They try to actually get to the outside of the fight. Phoenix goes down. Impact's Flame Splitter was still on, and the Zanya's Rush was able to hit the Sonic Wave. Resonating Strike not in range. You know he wanted that. And it's going to be Xiaowei Xiao Xiao in the chase. Not enough mana bar to keep finishing on that one, though. Apollo in the eyes of the entire team of Team oh. Liquid. Quas picks up a triple kill. The Penta in his eyes. Xiaowei Xiao, Xiao very low on mana. Definitely can't get the Rift Walk there. Adrian is going to thwart the Penta kill, and they are going to be onto the inhibitor turrets 35 minutes into the game. Yeah, he may have thwarted the Penta kill, but did you just lose the game right there? Yeah. That's Quas coming in with another great flank play on Hecarim. Tristana to take down these turrets. Team Liquid may have just won the game. Quas said it would be from the angles of how he approached the fights. If he could do it better than his top lane impact here in the game of the week, then the Team Liquid would come up with the win, and they have done so. 35 minutes in, Team Liquid take down Team Impulse. And that's one of the most controlled victories I've seen a team have against Team Impulse. It got a little bit chaotic early, but Team Liquid built the defensive items they needed to, and then they just kind of waited and bided their time until they hit the item breakpoints that they wanted to. One fight, and it was basically over. They won the mid lane fight, took that into the Baron. That meant that Triss could push turrets. Team Impulse tried to desperately push them back out, and then it was over. Peter very, very happy with the results of his team. Now five and one on the split, sending Impulse to a 3-3 record. And Liquid now feeling very good about the synergy of the team, very good about entering this split, and have almost been able to hit up every team so far. Next week starts with Team Solo Mid, and then Dignitas. So it's going to be very tough games for them. Good momentum to be going in with, though. Absolutely. Impulse tried as they might early game they got a huge fight under the turret so much chaos and that's what they thrive in three assists to impacts rumble in the top lane and he still was not able to win that one over onto onto quas's hecarim all the while though there was piglet pushing the side waves avoiding the fights and getting free time onto turrets he killed five turrets this game at yeah. least those are the ones he got credit for and they never really let Team Impulse access their power spikes, which was just really controlled play. It seemed boring in the mid game, but the Team Liquid was just biding their time. You saw once they turned it on, they had the advantages and they had the ways of starting the team fight. So yep. from the drafting phase to the item choices, which are unconventional to the mid middle of the game, they were just able to outplay Team Impulse. I feel like when we saw it, you kind of questioned the, the rotation back of Impulse in the early part of the game. Right. Putting him back top lane, saying maybe the Rumble at 03 is just going to start trouncing on the Hecarim now. Maybe yeah. that's the way it works. That's it the... It didn't pan out for him. It's not the way it ended up panning out, because Callista Annie can beat Tristana Nautilus in some situations, but when Piglet freezes the lane for that long at the start of the game, gets a level advantage, he was always strong enough to get that free time on the turrets. And still get Dominate down there to help Piglet in getting first blood, or get, not first blood, but getting that next blood that Liquid would actually use to start catapulting themselves into the game. Yep. And Forward Wards, like you said, a very methodical game as well. Impulse 
plays that game, making people match their pace, and they were never able even to find a pace here. They couldn't yeah. find their footing. The pace was very much Team Liquid's way. It was controlled and measured, and Impulse, that's not the way they like to play, and it cost them a loss. Well, like, hopefully controlled and measured takes them through TSM and CLG next week for Team Liquid. Right now, Zyrene is standing by at the Telestrator to help us break down Team Liquid's win.